If you thought Sky Sentinel was cool, Ukraine's Sky Fortress is the next big thing. Picture this, it's 3 a.m. in Ukraine. Somewhere in the darkness, a $30,000 Shahi drone is buzzing toward a power plant, sounding like a lawnmower with a death wish. Suddenly, a handful of Ukrainian soldiers in a Hilux get an alert from a sensor that costs less than a family dinner at Applebee's. And within minutes, that drone is toast. This is the story of how Ukraine turned sound into a weapon and may have just rewritten the rule book on air defense, one cheap sensor at a time. Hey friends, Wes here, US multi-branch veteran and big fan of musicals. Today, we're talking about Sky Fortress. It's jazzy, it's snazzy, it's a regular humdinger. It's also a complete rethink of how air defense gets done when budgets are tight and enemies don't play fair. At its heart, Sky Fortress is a nationwide network of acoustic sensors, thousands of them, deployed across Ukraine's towns, cities, and critical infrastructure. Unlike traditional systems that rely on expensive, centralized radars, this approach is distributed, modular, and you don't need a billion dollar command center. You need a box of parts, a basic CPU, and a microphone array. Oh, and some Ukrainian ingenuity, which they happen to have in spades. The brilliance is in the blend. Sky Fortress units act like a digital nervous system, each sensor listening for the unique acoustic patterns, be it a buzzy wail of a Shahid engine or the subtle pitch of a low-flying cruise missile. Instead of being tied to one control room, data from every sensor feeds into the network. That covers gaps, triangulates positions, and cross-checks audio signatures. This decentralized architecture means the system is resilient. Take out one node and the rest fill in the blanks, kind of like a digital whack-a-mole for drone threats. Also, Sky Fortress was built with off-the-shelf components, so it doesn't depend on long military procurement cycles. The first generation even ran on recycled smartphones, proving that consumer tech, when cleverly hacked, can be as effective as anything purpose-built for war. Every new iteration gets more compact, more energy efficient, and easier to deploy. Crucially, Sky Fortress is about democratizing air defense. It empowers territorial defense groups, local authorities, and even civilians and volunteers. Anyone can be trained to deploy or maintain a sensor or to interpret the basic alerts. This means air defense isn't just happening from the top down. It's grassroots. It's scalable. In short, Sky Fortress is a Ukrainian answer to a 21st century problem, fighting mass drone attacks with mass innovation. It's not the high-tech solution you see on Defense Expo posters. It's the one that actually works right now under fire and on budget. So how does it work? Well, Sky Fortress flips the script on air defense by ditching radar and going full audio. Here's how it pulls it off. Each Sky Fortress sensor is a smart microphone array. Think of it as a tiny electronic ear with a computer brain that's tuned to pick up the signature noises made by drones, cruise missiles, or even low-flying helicopters. These aren't your average sound sensors. They're trained using machine learning and neural networks to distinguish between the audio waveform of everything from the roar of a city bus to the oddly specific whine of a Shahid engine. Once a suspicious sound is detected, the sensor processes it locally thanks to an onboard CPU. The magic, though, is in the machine learning. The system compares incoming sounds to a massive database of known threats, filtering out false alarms from motorcycles, farm equipment, or even fireworks. If it finds a match, the sensor immediately broadcasts a detection event to the wider Sky Fortress network. But it doesn't stop there because the system is networked. Multiple sensors that hear the same drone coordinate their data using triangulation to pinpoint the target's direction and distance. This lets Sky Fortress estimate a drone's flight path in near real time, updating local firing teams through secure apps on their tablets or smartphones. And what happens next is a symphony of speed. Firing teams, positioned anywhere from rooftops to the back of pickup trucks, receive target coordinates and sound signatures as alerts. 
Within seconds, they can visually confirm the target and engage using anything from heavy machine guns to man pads. And because Sky Fortress is passive, it never emits any signals, so it's invisible to the enemy. Unlike radar, which is a big neon sign saying, shoot here please, the whole setup is fast, cheap, and deeply flexible. The software is constantly updated with new threat signatures as Russians adapt or change up their drone engines. Sensors can be moved or redeployed in hours, not weeks. If a node goes down, the network reroutes around it. And in a major attack, Sky Fortress can saturate operators with dozens of live tracks, letting defenders pick off drones before they reach civilian targets. In essence, Sky Fortress turns a nation's collective ears into an always-on, real-time warning system. It works not by outspending the enemy, but by outsmarting them, using the air itself as an early warning line. Sky Fortress evolved fast. At first, engineers simply leveraged smartphone hardware, using existing mics and processors to get the system running as quickly as possible. But within months, they had built custom CPUs and sound cards, making third-gen sensors even more precise, durable, and scalable. Each sensor can be added, removed, repositioned to cover high-risk areas or blind spots in radar coverage. And since the system is passive, there is no electronic signature for Russian forces to target. No emissions, no warning, no easy way to jam it. Paired with cheap anti-air guns, the tactical effect is dramatic. Decentralized, mobile, and scalable air defense with frontline units empowered to defend their own little patch of sky. This isn't your father's Cold War command bunker. This is fast, flexible, bottom-up defense. Drones like the Shahid have a weak spot. They're noisy. Actually, the Russians tried to change drone noise signatures, but the Sky Fortress AI just retrained itself. That's what you call staying ahead of the curve. Today, about 20% of all aerial targets tracked in Ukraine rely solely on acoustic data. And as more sophisticated missiles like those supplied by North Korea enter into the mix, Ukraine's using a hybrid layered defense. We've all heard about the expense of Patriots for ballistic threats, but imagine the acoustic systems for mass, low-cost drones, something that ties into the Sky Sentinel, Sky Fortress and Sky Sentinel working together. But here's where things get spicy for the armchair generals. Western militaries, NATO included, had built their doctrine on high-end, centralized, radar-driven defense. But as the war in Ukraine proves, top-down structures and billion-dollar procurement cycles don't keep pace with swarming, cheap drone attacks. Sky Fortress and systems like it show that flexible, flat warfighting, where small local teams are empowered to experiment, adapt, and launch new tech at speed, actually works. It's already shifting the thinking inside NATO and EU defense white papers as European countries scramble to upgrade their own defenses. But there's still a risk. These passive systems work best in the rear where the drone threat is highest, but airspace is less contested. They can't fully replace high-end radar or long-range interceptors at least not yet. This is a glimpse into the future of air defense. NATO countries have seen the demo at Ramstein Air Base, Romania is already testing Sky Fortress, and the Alliance has funded an expansion of the network, adding 15,000 more sensors to Ukraine's already dense mesh. In the long term, systems like Sky Fortress could shift the global balance by putting Russia or any future aggressor on the wrong side of the cost curve. It challenges the economies of modern war. You want to bankrupt your enemy? Make them spend millions to overcome your $1,000 hack. And as Ukraine's flat, fast, and local approach spreads, it's challenging the slow, hierarchical, and expensive procurement culture that's dominated the West since at least the Cold War. Looking forward, expect more fusion, more acoustic radar, more optical, and AI working together to track, identify, and kill incoming threats. The future is layered. High-end systems for the big stuff, smart, cheap sensors for everything else. Ukraine's experience is now shaping NATO's playbook, with defense ministries asking how they can rapidly spin up passive detection networks and empower local teams. But for Ukraine, staying ahead means consistent iteration. 
training the AI on new threats, deploying more sensors, and pushing the boundaries of cost-effective innovation. Okay, that's it for today, friends. If you're as fascinated as I am by how Ukraine is rewriting the future of air defense with little more than clever code and microphones, you'll want to stick around. I'll keep digging into these innovations and the way they're shaking up NATO, Europe, and the broader world. And if you got value from this breakdown, hit that subscribe button. It, but it's not there. Can we put the subscribe button on the screen just right? Okay, there it is. Hit the subscribe button. You know you want to. It's, it's right there. Just hit it. Just push the, push the subscribe button. It's okay. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Just here, just push the button. When you push that button, it keeps this channel alive and ensures I won't have to start selling tactical earplugs to fund my research. Stay sharp, keep learning, and as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.